Hi guys, in this video we're going to look at some derivatives of benzene, single substitution derivatives, double substitution derivatives, multiple substitution derivatives, and then finally molecules where benzene is not the main focus before we summarise. So as we've seen in our other videos on benzene, it's difficult to break up aromatic rings because we have delocalised electrons which increase the stability. However, aromatic rings will undergo substitution reactions. These are reactions where one of the hydrogen atoms on a benzene ring is swapped for another species. So here, if we were to label this carbon 1, we would remove the hydrogen attached and then attach a chlorine atom. Remember, it's worth noting that although we've shown the structure of benzene here as alternating single and double bonds, this is just for convenience, and the actual structure is more complicated with a delocalised system. But it's worth watching our video on the structure of benzene to see that in more detail. Some common groups that we can substitute onto a benzene ring are given in this table. We can have chlorine atoms with the prefix chloro. We'll look more at these prefixes and how the naming of aromatic compounds works in a minute. We then have bromine atoms with the prefix bromo, nitrofunctional groups which are given by NO2, these give a prefix of nitro, and alkyl chains. So for example, we could have CH2, CH3, which would have a prefix of ethyl. The rest of these alkyl chains you should have come across before. So we have methyl, ethyl, propyl, and it going on. So firstly, let's look at naming the derivatives that come out of single substitutions. If benzene is the main functional group of the molecule, as in the main part we're interested in, this becomes the main part of the name. If we have only one substituted species, which we will in a single substitution, then because all of the benzene carbons are identical, they're the same, we don't need to number them. Because of the symmetry of the molecule, we could just rotate it. The names of these types of molecule take the form of prefix benzene. These prefixes were given in the table before. So if it was a chlorine atom, we'd have chlorobenzene, bromine, bromobenzene, nitro functional group, nitrobenzene. If we had some sort of alkyl chain, it could be methylbenzene or ethylbenzene. So we can see that in practice here with these examples, where here we have a nitro functional group so we have nitrobenzene. Here we have a chlorine atom, so we have chlorobenzene. And finally, we have an alkyl branch, so here we have methylbenzene. We can replace more than one hydrogen in the benzene ring and substitute other groups on to multiple carbons. We use the same naming convention with these double substituted molecules where we have a prefix and then benzene. However, the prefix now gets longer so it can include information from both of the groups that we've substituted onto the benzene. When we're constructing the prefix, we put together the prefixes that we saw on the last slide and we order them alphabetically. We also use numbers to indicate which carbon they're on. We separate all of this information by dashing. So we could have one bromo. We always start numbering at one with the carbon that has the group with the closest to the beginning of the alphabet starting letter. And then we would have another dash and then depending on what carbon it was on, let's say it was the third carbon, we would then have say three nitro. You can see here that B comes before N in the alphabet, so that's why it's bromonitro, and this would form our prefix. So let's have a look at some more examples. If we look at this molecule given to us here with a skeletal formula, then we start with the carbon that has the group that's closest to the beginning of the alphabet by name. So here it's bromo and chloro, so bromo becomes the one that goes first and is labelled on carbon 1. 
We then need to label the other carbons going around in a circle. We could go around this way, going two, three, four, five, six, but then the chlorine would be on the sixth carbon, which is the largest number it possibly can be. Instead, we label the other way, going one, two, three, four, five, six, to number the carbons. So now we have one bromo, two chloro, benzene. We have this in alphabetical order with the smallest possible numbers. So we would not have one chloro, two bromo, because then C comes before B, and this is not alphabetic order. And as we've just made clear, we would not have one six chloro benzene, although depending on the way you order, it would be plausible to call this the sixth carbon. Now let's look at another example where we have two of the same group. So it doesn't matter which one you label one with, but it does matter the order in which you go around the ring. So for example, if we chose to go anti-clockwise, this would be carbon two, three, four, and we would have the other methyl group on carbon five, which is a bigger number than possible. Instead, we label round the other way, so this gives us the proper name of 1,3-dimethylbenzene. We use dimethyl instead of 1-methyl-3-methyl just to make the name more compact and neater to look at when they're the same group. So again, just to stress, this would not be 1,5-dimethylbenzene, although plausibly we could go round the other way and label it fifth, but the rules say that we must use the smallest numbers. We can have more than two substitutions, and we just use the same patterns for making the names. The prefixes just get longer. As we showed with the previous example of dimethylbenzene, using prefixes like di and also tri, if we have three of the same type of species, stops the names getting longer than they need to be. So let's look at another example of this. This can be quite a complicated molecule to name, so let's go through it carefully. Firstly, think alphabetical. We want to label bromo before chloro. But now there are two bromide species that we've added on that we could start with naming. We want to pick the one that gives us the smallest number. If we were to pick this bromo as carbon 1, then what we've done is split the other two functional groups so they're on different sides of the aromatic ring. This is going to lead to having, depending on which way you go round, one smallish number and one biggish number. Or we could go the other way and chlorine could be on carbon 2 and then we'd have the other bromine on carbon number 5. We can see, however, that if we start labelling at the other bromo species, then we keep all of the groups we're interested in in one half of the aromatic ring, and so the numbers will be smaller. So this is why we label this carbon 1, then move around this way to keep the numbers small. So 1, 2, 3, 4, then we don't need to go any further because there's no more groups. So now we do the bromos first as dibromo, so we have 1, 3, dibromo. The chloride species is on the fourth carbon, so it's 4, chloro, benzene. We can make it clear that it's not 1, chloro, 2, 4, dibromo or bromo because now the chloro would be before the B, and then the 1, 5, 6 labelling uses much bigger numbers, so this is also not the case. So finally, what about if we're not focusing on benzene? We've said that the previous systems of names work when benzene is the key part of the molecule, but sometimes that's not the case if it's not the main functional group. In this case, when it's not the main functional group, so we might be interested in a longer chain of carbons or something else in the molecule, then the benzene no longer makes up the main part of the name. The part of the chemical that has the main bit that we're interested in becomes the main functional group part of the name, and we indicate that there's an aromatic ring by adding phenyl as a prefix. So let's look at an example of this. We've got a benzene ring where we've added on an ethene molecule, where we have the double bond away from the benzene. 
Ethene is the main part of this molecule, if that's what we're interested in, so we would call this phenyl ethene. There are complicated rules and conventions on when we use phenyl ethene, um, or phenyl any other main functional group, versus when we would use a prefix and then benzene, and it should be made clear to you in the exam which case you're dealing with, and if you go on further in chemistry, you will get more used to the naming conventions. That's all for this video, guys, so let's summarise. Benzene substitution reactions are common. We name a singly substituted benzene as the prefix of what we've added onto the benzene, prefix benzene. We name double substituted benzene using rules that prefixes are listed in alphabetical order, and when we label the numbers of the carbons onto which they're attached, we use the smallest numbers we can. When we make multily substituted benzene, we use the same rules, but make use of di and tri prefixes to keep the names shorter. If we're naming molecules where benzene is not the main focus, then we use a prefix of phenyl to show that an aromatic ring is present, before having the functional group name for the main part of the molecule. That's all for this video, guys, so thanks for watching. Hey guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you're looking for an amazing A-level chemistry resource, join me today in my series of engaging bite-sized video tutorials. Just click the Snap Revised smiley face, and together, let's make A-level chemistry a walk in the park.